Hello, you are welcome. Today we are discussing physiology of bone healing. Okay, so before we talk about uh, the physiology of bone healing, I think let's talk about uh, a fracture. So, what's the definition of a fracture? So, a fracture is a break in continuity of a bone characterized by pain. Okay, so what are the types of fractures? Okay, so here are the types of uh, fractures. Number one, we're saying green stick fractures. This is a fracture that is usually common in uh, children. And number two, transverse fracture. So a transverse fracture, this is a fracture that usually happens at 90 degrees in the long axis of the bone. Then we have an oblique fracture, which is a uh, happens at uh, less than 90 degrees, the long axis of the bone. Then you have a comminuted fracture. A comminuted fracture, this is a fracture in which there are some bone fragments which happen. So there are two or um, more than two pieces of uh, bones. So there are more fragments of bones. Then you have a pathologic fracture. So a pathologic fracture, this is a fracture that uh, happens due to infection. Okay, like osteoporosis. Then we have uh, an open fracture. An open fracture, this is a fracture in which there is a, um, a wound. Sometimes the bone may be even protruding. So these are the uh, diagrams of the fracture. So there's a transverse fracture there, a stress fracture, an oblique fracture, a green stick fracture, comminuted fracture. These, also are, these are also types of the fractures. A green stick fracture, transverse fracture, comminuted fracture, spiral fracture, and also a compound fracture. Okay, so I'm saying the physiology of bone healing. So when you talk about the physiology of bone healing, this is a process of bone healing which includes the following. Okay, so number one, it's a hematoma formation. So this is a, this stage begins immediately. Uh, after the fractures are happening, blood vessels supplying the bone, the rostium, are ruptured during the fracture. The hematoma forms between the ends of the bones and surrounding tissues. Okay, then the second one is uh, granulation. So, granulation this is the accumulation of exudate containing macrophages that phagocytose the hematoma and the small fragments of the bone without the blood supply. Okay, so fibroblasts migrate to the site. Granulation tissue and new capillaries uh, develop. Okay, so the third one is uh, callus formation. Okay, so callus formation, that's why there's a, a, a large number of osteoblasts secrete sponge bone, which unites the ends of the broken bone. It is protected by the by the outer layer of the bone and the cartilage. After some weeks, the callus matures and the cut the cartilage slowly replaced with a new bone. Okay. Then the fourth stage you are saying bone remodeling or reshaping. So reshaping of the bone is continuous and gradually in the medullary canal. And the medullary canal is reopened through the callus. Okay, so after some time, the bone heals completely. The callus tissue, the bone heals completely with the callus tissue completely replaced with mature, compact bone. So that is the reshaping of the bone. Okay, so what are the factors that can delay bone healing? Okay. So number one, you are saying tissue fragments between the bone ends. They may delay bone healing. Number two, you are saying deficient blood supply. Okay? They can also delay bone healing. Number three, poor alignments of the bone. They can also delay bone healing. Number four, you are saying continued mobility of bone ends. may also delay bone healing. Number five, infection, and also today, bone healing, and many more factors that are not mentioned.
Okay. So thank you very much for your time. Until next time. Bye bye.